from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Big Ed Rommel, veteran hurler of the pennant-winning Philadelphia Athletics, begins the first lesson in how to pitch. Eddie, you know, throws the best slow ball of any man in either league. Let's ask him how he does it. Ed, show us how you throw that famous knuckleball. That isn't a knuckle ball. That's a fingertip ball thrown with the first and second finger of the right hand very loosely in hand. But most of all, it's not as how you throw the ball. It's the hiding of the ball from the opposing players. Just keep the ball in your hand and keep it away. Don't let them see it here, and then they see what you're going to throw. Okay, Ed. Now let's see you put one of those knuckle, I beg pardon, I mean fingertip balls right over the pan. All right, here it goes. Here it comes. Once again, Ed, slow motion this time. At a boy, Leroy Mahat. They tell me that Roy gave up bricklaying in South Carolina to lay horsehide over the corners for Mr. Mack and company. Mahaffey has a fast breaking curve that's worth learning something about. Maybe he'll show us how he does it. Show the boys how you hold the ball to throw that big curve of yours. Well, I grip it with those two fingers real tight and let it go off with that fourth finger, like that. You want me to show you one? Yes, Roy. But wait a minute. Let's get down there back of Mickey Cochran and watch it come over the plate. Did you see that curve? Come on, Roy. Now, we want to see that fast-breaking curve come right over the pan in slow motion. Here she comes. Rube Wahlberg, the raw bone port cider from the state of Washington, whose powerful frame contributed plenty of victories for the A's last year. Take a look at the way the Rube holds that ball. There's a tip for you fellows who want to learn how to pitch. But first, get yourself a big paw like the Rube. Here we are, right back of the plate. Hope Mickey Cochran doesn't mind having us looking over his shoulder while he works. Lefty Grove, old lean lightning himself, the Maryland. Let's go over and take a look at Lefty's big fist and see how he holds the old pill when he throws his famous cannonball. Lefty, show the boys how you hold and control that speed ball of yours. Just like that. All right, let's heave one across the pan now. This is slow motion, folks, so maybe you'll get to see that ball. Here it comes. He's pulled the trigger. Zingo. Boy, that's pitching. And I don't mean hay or horseshoes. Do it again, Lefty.
And that, ladies and gentlemen, ends the lesson for today. Folks, the gentleman with his head in the birdcage is none other than our old friend Mickey Cochran, the spark plug of the team. Mickey, how do they look to you this year? Why, they look fine. All our veteran pitchers look just as good as ever. Groves is, looks to be just as fast. Wahlberg looks fine. And so does Mahaffey. Now, we look for quite a lot of pitching out of this young fellow, Bowman. Altogether, I think we'll get just as good pitching this year as we got last, and that ought to be enough to win for us. We begin the lesson with Max Bishop, the demon leadoff man of Connie's crew, the man whose photographic eye works pitchers for more passes to first than any other member of the team. When Max can't coax his way to first, he's very likely to pull a sharp single to right. Let's see how he does it. Here he is again in slow motion photography. Notice how Max crowds that plate. No wonder they can't pitch strikes to him. Number three, Mickey Cochran, the hittinest catcher in baseball. Not only is Mickey a grand backstop, but Connie Mack has him up here near the head of the batting order because Mickey is one of the most scientific hitters on the club, able to place a hit in any uncovered area. Say, Mickey, what's your best advice on how to hit? In place hitting, the main thing is to watch the ball and hit the ball where it is pitched. For example, a left-hand batter, the ball is pitched from the outside corner of the plate, hit it into left field. If it's pitched over the middle of the plate, try to hit it through the box. If it's pitched on the inside, try to pull it down the right field line. All right, Mickey, let's see you do it. And now, Mickey Cochran gives you the same demonstration with the action eight times slower than normal speed. Next up, Jimmy Fox. We'll now see and hear the Husky boy from the eastern shore, the lad who pokes him over the left field pavilion. Jimmy is never content just to knock a ball into the bleachers. He slams it clean out of the park. Wow, what a hit! Hey, Jimmy, come back here, will you? We want to learn how to do that ourselves. Tell the folks how you do it, Jimmy. How do you get that distance? Well, I use a fairly heavy bat. Grip it well down on the end. The main thing in getting distance, I think, is not how hard you swing, but in timing the ball. You want to time so that you can you get all your weight and swing right together when you hit, like this. That's fine, Jimmy. Thank you. Now the same lesson again in slow motion. And here comes another good hitting example for you, the old reliable Bing Miller himself, the dependable man in a pinch, when a single, a double, a triple, sometimes even a homer means a ball game in the win column for the A's, there's Bing. Do your stuff, Bing. Oh, you're watching a ball game between the Philadelphia Athletics and the Philadelphia Athletic. These fellows, pennant-winning champions of the diamond, are so nutty about baseball that they ch even choose up sides and play against each other if there's no regular game scheduled. There's Bing Miller on first base. Watch him now. I think he's going to steal second. That's Bing's specialty, you know. There he goes. Oh, boy, what a base runner. Here comes another well-known play. The fans will recognize this one, all right. Williams to Bishop to Fox. You've heard that before. The famous double play combination that spells goose eggs for the A's opponent. Watch it now. 
It looks like they're all set to pull one of those fast ones. He hit it, and, and Dip Williams scoops it up. He fires to Bishop. The man is out. Bishop to Fox. The man is out. What a ball team. What a ball team. Still playing the game. Dine is pitching. He hit it. A long, high fly to, well... Introducing Connie Mack, the grand old man of baseball, winner of nine American League pennants and five World Series championships, leader of the Philadelphia Athletics. Mr. Mack, how do the athletics impress you as the season begins? It reminds me it's being better than they were last year due to the fact that such players as Fox and Cochran seem to be in better physical condition, and I see no reason why our boys shouldn't be stronger this coming year than they were last year. Uh, upon what uh, one main condition would you say that the team's success depends this year? The team's success will depend a great deal upon the spirit that the boys put in their work. If they go at their work the same as they have in the past three years, there is no doubt in my uh, mind but what the boys will repeat again in 1932. That's fine. What rules would you give, Mr. Mack, for young boys to, who wish to make a success in baseball? First, I would say that these boys should attend high school, also college, if possible. It is necessary to have an education in order, in order to be a smart baseball player. They also must have the love for the game, and the boy who does not have the love for the game should not attempt to play it. Next up, Big Jim Elliott, the man who won 19 ball games for the Bills last year. Take a look at Jim's big paw. That's the way to hold the ball when you want to throw a hard high one. Fast ball that rips across the batter's chest. And when Jim Elliott throws it, try and hit it. Jim's a left hander, and one of the best in the game. So, all you port siders who want to learn how, better watch the professor. Come on, Jim, uncork one of those great big curve balls. Another one, Jim. Let's see a curved ball that really curves. That's enough. And here's the third member of the faculty, Wise Dudley, who has a beautiful overhand delivery. When he goes into action, he looks like a picture on the cover of a magazine. Now get me right on this, folks. I don't mean the face. I mean the way he pitches a baseball. Now here's a big close-up of how Dudley says you should hold the old pill to throw a sinker, a ball that ducks under the bat. Now here's the lad himself. Now watch that delivery, just like an artist would paint it. How's that for correct and perfect style in the box? And believe it or not, Dudley throws that way naturally. He's a good pitcher who looks good. Here comes another one. Just like a movie star in a baseball pit. Thank you, Dad. Now, let's take a lesson from a teacher who teaches just the opposite. Ed Holly, the side wheeler. The man who will show you an outside roundhouse delivery that brings the ball right up to the plate at a crazy angle and gets the batter's goat. Ed holds the ball like this when he delivers his crossfire pitch, but the trick is in how he does it. Watch him now. He's getting ready for the throw. Keep your eyes peeled for that wide outside sweep of the old right arm. 
Here's another angle on the same throw. Out and around and right across the pan. That's how Ed says you should learn to do it. Let's have another one, Ed. Boy, you've got to be a contortionist to learn that one. And last of all, Bill Collins. Bill is rated one of the best pitchers in the National League. But folks, I warn you, this lesson is only for advanced pupils. Professor Collins is hot stuff. This looks easy. All you have to do is hold a baseball just like this, and then throw it exactly the same way Bill Collins throws it, and you too can earn a big leg salary. But the trouble is, who can throw it the way Phil does? Just watch him now and see if you can imitate this one. Did you see that? Fidgety Phil. That's what they call him, Fidgety Phil. Go ahead, fidget some more if we want to learn how. Maybe we'll do better down here behind the catcher's right ear. Now, slow ball, Phil. Slow enough so we can count the stitches. Another one. And that will end the lesson. And then we'll all go behind the barn and practice fidgeting. Thank you, Professor. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the cast for today's movie, Seven Mighty Sockers, the hardest, hardest hitness batters of Philadelphia's National League team, the Phillies, hitters whose percentage is 300 and upwards. You know, baseball's 300 is like society's 400, very exclusive. But to get into this one, you've got to do it on a diamond, not with them. All right, boys, show the folks how you do your stuff. Here's another little guy, Dick Bartell, one of the best shortstops in the business, and 150 pounds of dynamite with a bat. Let's see you bunt it, Dick. Very good. Now a good clean sock with both shoulders in the swing. Wham! Watch that boy get up and go. And after those two little fellas, here comes the powerhouse. Bud Davis, the big potato from Birmingham. When Spud hits a baseball, it stays hit. Notice this form. Both feet on the ground and a firm grip on the bat. That's all. And Spud dares the pitcher to throw one past him. It's a hit. And there he goes. Spud says he has to hit him a long way because when he runs the bases, he likes to take his own sweet time. Next up, Pinky Whitney. Bill's third baseman and captain of the team, and a hitter who can do a lot of damage with a bat. Here comes the throw. That's hit them, and the place to look for it is a way back yonder by the fence. Hit another one for us, Pinky. Some of the boys out front want to learn how to do it. Next up, Don Hurst, who does his hitting from the left side of the plate. Every right field fence in the league knows what it feels like to stop one of Don's drives. Sometimes the wall ducks, and then it's a home run. Here comes the throw. Atta boy. Next and last man up, Chuck Fine, one of the greatest of them all. The lad who led the league in home runs last season. Hit one for us, Chuck. Great thing about Chuck is that they can hit practically anything that's pitched at him. They all look alike to his big stick. <clears throat> Watch him do business with a few bad ones that a lot of good hitters wouldn't go near with their bats. High one.
long one. That was wide. Inside. Chuck can make home runs out of all of them. Now going to be told how to get into this exclusive 300 set. Bert Schotten is the manager of Philadelphia's National League Ball Club, and he's going to tell you just exactly how these 300 hitters that you've been looking at got that way. Bert Schotten. I'm convinced that hitters are born, not made. You can correct their form to help them, but they must have the natural ability to coordinate with eye and muscle the air expects to be a great hitter at Chuck Klein. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.